Good morning, church. Greetings to you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. We welcome you as you've come together to celebrate your faith on this October Sunday. We're so glad you're here. Uh, just a couple of things to mention to you. Uh, first of all, back on the bulletin board in Linger Hall, uh, there are still a few things that we need in terms of, of supplies for the spaghetti dinner this Friday evening and also workers for this coming Friday evening. And I was informed that if I didn't get any help this morning, that I was going to be responsible for the rest of the things that's on the board and, and all the tasks that need to be done. So if you would, pitch in and, and help a fellow out, would you? <laughs> and also do want to mention to you that this coming uh, Friday evening from 5 to 7 is a spaghetti dinner downstairs in Fellowship Hall, and the proceeds of that will go to support uh, cross lines at the Upshur Parish House. And come and enjoy the fellowship and come and enjoy the good food and we, uh, we look forward to seeing you. Also included in your bulletin this morning is a slip of paper. And this year, rather than do bulletins or do mums or whatever else, this year we're offering folks the opportunity to give a gift to the parish house in the name of the special kids in your life, whether they're little kids, grandchildren, uh, or whether they're adult children, whatever you want to do, uh, to give a gift uh, to help support the ministry at the parish house and to also celebrate the kids in your life. Uh, the last Sunday of the month is Children's Sabbath, and that's when the register will be published in the, uh, in the bulletin. And uh, we'll have uh, kids here all over the place. And, and actually, after Children's Sabbath service, uh, there will be a reception for all of our kids in the form of a birthday party uh, because since COVID, we weren't able to pamper parents before the babies were born. So what we would do was just celebrate the kids with the birthday cake. What better way to celebrate a kid than with a birthday cake? So I was looking forward to that. So, And give yourself the opportunity to uh, take advantage of the things that are presented there and the announcement sheet this morning. Again, it's good to see you today. It's good to be in the house of the Lord to get together today. And as we are together today, help us, may we all know that God is very near. Let the worship begin.
For those who are able, please stand as we join our voices together in today's choral call to worship, the, th the second verse of all things bright and beautiful. Praise be to God, who has brought us here this day. Praise and thanks to God for all the blessings we have received. What joy we have in God's presence. What peace is brought to us in God's house. This is truly the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's pray. Lord of grace and all creation, we call upon you this day to open our hearts to your love, our ears to your words, our eyes to see the needs of those both near and far, and our spirits to do your will. Be with us and give us courage and inspiration for the future of our world, O oh Lord. Amen. Our hymn of praise is number 126 as we sing together, sing praise to God who reigns above.
Thank you. Please be seated. I invite you to hear these words of the Psalter from Psalm 106, verses 1 through 6, and then verses 19 through 23. Praise the Lord. I'll give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who can utter the mighty doings of the Lord or declare all his praise? Happy are those who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, when you show favor to your people. Help me when you deliver them, that I may see the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may rejoice in the gladness of your nation, that I may glory in your heritage. Both we and our ancestors have sinned. We have committed iniquity, have done wickedly. And from verse 19, they made a calf at Horeb and worshiped a cast image. They exchanged the glory of God for the image of an ox that eats grass. They forgot God, their Savior, who had done great things in Egypt, wondrous works in the land of Ham, and awesome deeds by the Red Sea. Therefore he said he would destroy them. But not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach before him, to turn away his wrath from destroying them. Let us call on the name of the one who invites us to speak the truth about ourselves and our relationships and promises to show mercy. Holy and merciful God, we do not know how to pray as we ought, and we know too well our constant failures to do as you have commanded and to hold fast to your word. Forgive us for the divisions we nurture. Guide us to your way. Keep us in your care and lead us into faith. We trust your word that the spirit of truth will show us all things and grant us courage and peace. This is the message we have heard from God and proclaim to you that God is light and in God there is no darkness at all. If we walk in the light 
as God is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus the Son cleanses us from all sin. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. And our response is the fourth verse of, O Jesus, I have promised. As the acolytes come forward, receive this invitation for offering. We sing our praises to the Lord, for God is good and God is worthy. We give our whole selves, our talents and material possessions to the church with the expectation that they be used to further God's dream for our world. Please commit yourself and give as you are able. Let's pray. Mighty and righteous God, as we bring our tithes and offerings to your altar, we confess we see ourselves in the stiff-necked Israelites in the wilderness. We are quick to lose sight of you, especially when our focus is turned in the, in the direction of gold. Your anger and disappointment are so justified, and as Moses intervened for the Israelites, Jesus has advocated for us with his very life. Help us to keep our focus as you light the pathway you would have us walk. We pray this with gratitude for your love and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Would those who are able please stand as we sing together the doxology. Please remain standing in honor of the reading of the gospel lesson for today. It comes to us from the gospel of Matthew chapter 22. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, an expert in the law, asked Jesus a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest. And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The word of God for God's people this day. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, and you may be seated. 
And as we sing together, give thanks. I invite the kids to come and join me here for Wiggle Time. Have you noticed it's starting to get cooler outside? Yeah, it looked a little bit like November this morning, didn't it? Like we're getting close to Thanksgiving. Mm, don't you love those beautiful leaves when they change? Yeah, it is cool. Yeah, that's right. Well, did I ever tell you about the time my mother and father-in-law lost my little boy? Yeah. <laughs> Grandma and Grandpa had gone to the store with my son, Nate. Now, Nate was an inquisitive little guy. And one of the things that Nate loved was dinosaurs. And at the time, dinosaurs were a big thing for kids. They may still be a big thing for kids. I'm not sure. But he loved dinosaurs. So grandma and grandpa go to this big store, and, and there, Nate was with grandma. And grandpa had found somebody that, that he knew. He, it seemed like he knew everybody all the time. And, and he would just stop and talk. So he was visiting with an old friend. Nate was with grandma. And she was busy shopping. Well, guess what Nate decided to do? Thought he'd do a little shopping of his own and go look at the dinosaurs. So there he was. There's Tyrannosauruses and Triceratops and, and whatever else all those dinosaurs were, Brontosauruses and all that stuff. And he's looking at them. And so when Grandma gets done shopping, she goes and finds Grandpa and she looks at Grandpa, and, and, and she says, where's Nate? Grandpa said, I thought he was with you. And she said, no, I thought he was with you. So they couldn't find Nate. He was gone. Well, you know what that does to grandparents. That's scary. No, oh, you talk about stress. Oh, yeah. So Grandma went one direction, and Grandpa went one direction, and Grandma realized that probably Nate was doing a little shopping of his own, and she went to the toy part department where all the dinosaurs were, and there he was. And so here came Grandpa. So Grandpa and Grandma's there with Nate as he was looking at dinosaurs, and he picks out the biggest Tyrannosaurus that he could find and says, Grandpa, can I get this? And Grandpa said, yeah, you can get it. So anyway, we heard that news a little bit later, and, and I was okay with it. Um, but I always made a promise when Nate was a little boy that I would never lose my son. And I didn't. I always kept an eye on Nate. If we were out together in the woods, we were side by side. If we were shopping, we were together. If we went to Kroger, I would pick him up and put him in the basket. I always knew where Nate was. If he was with me, we were together all the time. We were never very far apart. Well, this morning, there's a little bit of a scripture that I'm going to share with the folks that God is never far away. 
just like me always being close to my son Nate, God is always close to his, to, to God's sons and God's daughters. That's you and you and you and you and you and you, Vivi. God is never far away because God always says, I will not lose my children. He's all, God's always with you. Always with you. Well, that makes me feel good to be able to have that news because whether you're a person, a little person, or whether you are a, a big kid like the rest of us, God is never very far from us. God's always with us. Well, I don't know if you like dinosaurs or not, but if you go shopping with grandma and grandpa or anybody else for that matter, stay close by, okay? It's kind of scary to lose a grandchild or a child. <laughs> Let's have a prayer. Dear God, I thank you for these little ones with me today. They are so special to me. I look forward all week to have this joy and this time together with some of my best friends right here with me. Lord, bless them. Bless their families. Bless us all, O oh Lord, as we're busy telling them about you and how much you love you. We, you love us and how, and how close you are to all of us. Keep us safe, O oh Lord. Remind us that you're near, for it's in your name I pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up today, guys. It's always good to see you. We're going to do archery today. In children's church? Oh, okay, I got you. I got you. I'm going to be doing it inside. Oh, oh. Emma Kelly and Sweet. That sounds like fun. All right, watch your step there, guys. Oh, good. Good. Well, have fun. Be safe. You got it? You want me to hold your hand? There you go. There we go. Let's prepare ourselves for a moment of prayer as we sing the third verse of What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Sometimes the troubles of the world seem impossible to address. And the burdens of our lives seem too much for us to bear. Yet we trust that for God, all things are possible. God alone can save us. For that reason, we are bold to pray, saying, God of mercy, be gracious. We pray for peace among the nations, food for the hungry, justice for the poor, and a life of dignity for all people. God of mercy, be gracious to us. 
We pray for new life in the church, fresh energy and mission, faithfulness and ministry and witness, and reconciliation in the body of Christ. God of mercy, We pray for the welfare of this community, safe streets and homes, good schools and jobs, the spirit of love among neighbors. God of mercy. Be gracious to us. We pray for the healing of all who suffer, comfort for the afflicted, hope for the despairing and grieving, and strength for those who care for them. God of mercy, be gracious to us. O God, in whom all things are possible, we commend these prayers to you and commit our lives to seek your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to say when we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hello, folks. I know it's kind of the whole thing that the choir was going to sing today, but we had a little change of plans. So Cameron and I are going to share a song with you. Um, the song that we're going to be doing for you today, we will also be playing on November 5th for our day of bluegrass so if you like it and you want to hear more with the rest of the band uh, please be sure to join us for that this is a very classic very famous gospel song i think a lot of you will know it
Now that we're all good and homesick, thank you, Eva. Thank you, Cam. There's a story about a woman who was trying to find God. She had this recurring dream that she was looking through a thick plate glass window. Her face and her hands pressed against the glass and, and cupping the sides of her face around her eyes. It, it seems as though she could see God on the other side. So she banged on the window with her hands, rattling the window, trying to get God's attention, but, but God didn't even notice her. And the more she banged, the more desperate she became, and soon she begins shouting at God at the top of her voice. But finally, just leaning against the plate glass, offered no response to her desperate attempts to get God's teeth attention. But there was this quiet, calm voice right beside her that said, why are you making so much noise? There's nothing between us. Remember those beautiful words from the prophet Isaiah in chapter 55 when Isaiah writes, Seek God while God's here to be found. Pray to God while God's close. Come back to God who is merciful, who is lavish with forgiveness. And then the prophet records God's response by saying, I don't think the way you think. The way you work isn't the way I work. The Columbia River forms most of the border between Washington and Oregon, and there's a famous spot where a spring wells up when the Pacific Ocean is at low tide. And people come to dip their containers into that pure spring water for drinking. But then the tide comes in and the spring is submerged by the ocean and the salt water of the ocean tides. You might think that the spring stops flowing at high tide. But when divers dove underwater, they discovered that you can still see the clear water rushing from that freshwater spring and that the spring is still there even though the salty tide washes over it. Now, there are times and seasons in all of our lives when the tide comes in. The tide of a broken heart and despair. The tide of sin and anger and judgmentalism. The tide of family conflict and disappointment the tide of responsibility, and sometimes the inability to meet those responsibilities. The rush of life. The tide of needing more than our means or confused priorities. The tide of illness and grief. The tide of betrayal and the loss of love or the tide of a whole surge of rip currents that can take us down like a crashing wave, sometimes it's hard for us to find a spring of clear, pure water that we so desperately need to refresh our, our empty and overspent spirits. And that's one of the reasons we gather together as the body of Christ. Here, whether we're in person or online, we are able to rediscover those springs of water that come up from the quiet center to fill that God-shaped space deep inside of us. 
Uh, there's a song in the faith we sing that I love. And sometimes we sing it just before we pray as a church family, as a call to prayer. Come and find the quiet center in the crowded life we lead. Find the room for hope to enter, clear the chaos and the clutter. Clear our eyes that we can see all the things that really matter. Be at peace and simply be. God it is who speaks and names us. Knows our, bearing, knows our being, touches base. Raising courage when we're shrinking. Finding scope for faith begun. Indeed, there have been times here in this family of God when we have been filled till our cups are overflowing. And so we come here we come together to rediscover that center. Seek the Lord while God may be found. Call upon him when he is near. There's a story of a young writer who was doing research for a book, and in his preparations and research, he questioned people with one question. What do you want? And he wouldn't let anyone give those vague, ambiguous answers. If someone answered, I want to be an engineer, the writer would follow with, but why do you want to be an engineer? What do you really want? And much of the time, he traced down their greatest desire. You all have heard of Rudyard Kipling, haven't you? The 70-year-old Rudyard Kipling, so agitated and feverish and restless the week before he died, was asked by his nurse if he wanted anything, and he murmured, I want God. What, what do you really want? I may be biased, and you may not agree with me, but I believe, whether we care to admit it or not, God is the greatest desire of any heart. God is what we really want. God is what we really need. There's a God-shaped space inside us that only can be filled by God. And I'm afraid that the modern day opiate is the claim that the God-shaped space doesn't exist. But until that space is filled, until God is in that space in our lives where God should be, there remains a hollow that echoes emptiness. I, I believe that. Because without God in that place, we struggle with our own incompleteness. In Acts 17, we find these words, And the Lord has made every nation that they should see the Lord in the hope that they might find the Lord, though the Lord is not far from each one of us. So, we come seeking God, we come praying for God. You know, God can be found, you know, <laughs> but the interesting thing is that in searching for God, we always discover that God has been searching for us. That's the testimony of the New Testament. The shepherd out on the hillside searching for the lost sheep until it's found. It is not we who stand at God's door and humbly knock. It's God who takes the initiative. It is God who knocks at our door. 
the main purpose of worship is not that we may find God, but that we might be quiet enough and still enough so that we can hear the soft knocking of God upon the doors of our hearts. God asks, why are you making so much noise? There's nothing between us. Seek God while God's here to be found. Pray to God while God's close at hand. Come back to God who is merciful. Come back to our God who is lavish with with forgiveness. How often God comes to us, but we do not recognize God or welcome God's presence. But God comes, and for those who are seeking and those who are sensitive, they encounter the cruciform Jesus Christ. Some time ago, a noted columnist told a, told a visiting a state penitentiary to interview a prisoner serving time for murder. And she writes, Imagine my surprise going through the men's division to see on the wall of a cell the picture of the Good Shepherd. By permission of the warden, I interviewed this man and I asked about the picture. And this is what he said. Well, long ago at home, my mother had a picture like that. And she always told us that no matter what we had done, if we were truly sorry and tried to do better, that one day the good shepherd would find us and would take us back to the shelter of his fold. And she taught us a little prayer too. I've wandered far and I've never been any good to myself or to anyone else and I am sorry for my wasted life. But every night I say that prayer, that prayer and somehow I hope he'll find me one day and take me back again. The prayer the prisoner prayed over and over every night. Seek the Lord while he may be found. God is very near to us. Of course, we see God most clearly in the person of Jesus Christ. Isaiah knew that God was very near to him but he had only the vaguest outline of the character of God. He didn't have the model of Christ as we post-resurrection people have. He could not see God hold little children in his arms or forgive the woman in the streets as she washed his feet with her tears or heal the blind man on the road to Jericho or stop the stoning of the woman caught in adultery. He couldn't see resurrection Lazarus or Jairus' daughter. The prophet had no sight of Golgotha and the Savior on a cross. For all his wisdom as a prophet Isaiah could not see God as clearly as you and I can see God. The mere idea that a man named Jesus could reveal the character of God is truly mind-blowing. But that's the good news of the gospel. In the person of Jesus Christ, God came alongside us and in the person of the Holy Spirit, Jesus stays with us. He's never left us. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. God says, why are you making so much noise? There's nothing between us. 
Of course, there are those who will never see God unless they see God in us. The gospel lesson today reminds us of the greatest commandment. Love God with all your heart, your soul, and all your mind. And those words are followed with the second greatest commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. There are those who will never read, will never allow themselves to be exposed to the story of Jesus Christ. And there are people whose lives are so insulated, so overwhelmed with the tides of life that watch over them that that in their hour of need, it's nearly hopeless for them to be aware of the loving, ever-abiding presence of God unless they seek God while God is here to be found. The barriers they built are so durable, it literally would take an act of God to force through if God were that kind of a forceful God. But if only they see God in us. If only they see God in us, then they will know that God is near. You see, God and God's love is reflected in our love for others. That's the kind of life God longs for us to have. A life that so reflects God and God's love that others discover God reflected in us. Seek the Lord while he may be found. God is very near to us. That is true now. And it will be true forever. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, not even death. God is very near to us. We do not have to go far to find God, for the Almighty is already very near. We see God most clearly. In the person of Jesus Christ, when Jesus took our sins to the cross, he took away the tide of a whole surge of rip currents that can take us down like crashing waves. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Pray to God while God's close at hand. Come back to God who is merciful. Come back to our God who is lavish with forgiveness. Church, the world sees God most clearly in us. When our response to God's love and forgiveness is a love for God that's that's alive enough to love others as Jesus loves us. Why are you making so much noise? God is right there. Amen. Our hymn of commitment today is number 567, Heralds of Christ as we stand and sing together.
Uh, don't forget uh, to stop by the bulletin board and, and help a guy out today, would you? And, uh, and I know what you're having for supper on Friday night. Spaghetti, right? Five to seven. Hope to see you there. You see these words of benediction. You have received blessing upon blessing from the Lord. Now go into the world offering hope and peace to all people you meet. Be involved in justice and healing mercies ministries. In the name of the Lord, go in peace. Amen. Thank you.